the Yankees lose another series. The losing streak is snapped at nine. So when we last spoke, they had lost eight straight. Then they lost the first game of this national series to, you know, inch it up to nine, which was the first time that they had a nine game losing streak since 1982. However, they did win game two, but then they lost game three. And so that continues. And again, like I've said, um, I'm rooting against the Yankees. Um, that's just where I'm at. And so I was pleased by the result of the series. But um, they have now lost. Uh, they're 111 and 3 the last 15 series. And that dates back to the beginning of July. Also dating back to the beginning of July, they have lost seven straight rubber games. So this all tracks back to the St. Louis Cardinals series at the beginning of July. And look, it's not to say that June didn't have its struggles, but they were able, you know, and looking back, they were able to kind of make it through June okay, where you had that sweep against the Red Sox, which was bad, but then they were able to finish it off eventually with three straight series wins against, um, I believe it was Seattle, Texas, Oakland. Three straight AL West series, and they were able to get that done. And, and within that, there was actually a couple of rubber games that were won. But since then, um, it's just been an absolute disaster. The words used by Brian Cashman, a uh, uh, word used by Brian Cashman, who spoke with the media before game two of this series. So, yeah, I mean, 111 and three of the last 15 series, the last, you know, two months have been just a nightmare. The Yankees record now sits to 61 and 66. There is a very, very likely chance that they will finish and last in the AL East, um, barring something crazy where the Yankees improve dramatically and the Red Sox drop off. But I don't, I do not see that happening at all. Um, you know, a couple of things to talk about. Um, Everson Pereira makes his major league debut. He was called up. We suspected that might happen. And Oswald Peraza was called up as well. So a bit of a youth movement that they're trying to do here. And roster-wise, uh, Greg Allen was designated for assignment, and he is actually, uh, and he will now be a free agent. Um, so, you know, Greg Allen will look to latch on with another organization. And Billy McKinney was placed on the IL. Uh, we knew that there was some back, he had a bit of some back stiffness. So that lands him on the injured list. Carlos Rodon makes his return, made his uh, return in this series, and we'll talk about um, Rodon and Severino. Both pitched well. You know, different cases for both of them. I, I thought that, you know, I didn't think that they were great. I mean, in the case of Severino, you can't rip him. He'd been so so bad. Like like I mean, Rodon as well. But I, I guess Rodon, like, I don't know, bit of a misleading final line. But we'll 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 talk about that. Aaron Judge was, you know. Fantastic. Uh, had a three home run game in the, in the second game, and then he home run in the third game. So he actually had a five plate appearance span with four home runs. I think he's like the third Yankee in regular season, the third Yankee uh, in the last 50 years to do that. I think the other two were uh, Paul O'Neill and Gio Rochella. So, you know, that was a big storyline, but. If we're to keep it within the realms of, like, the series, and there's much bigger picture thoughts, but Tommy Canely is a very big story from the series. He was really, really bad, and, and for Canely, uh, was a major reason why they lost the series. He allows three homers within the two games he played. Uh, the first game gives up a home run to C.J. Abrams, which was really the game-running home run in the eighth inning, and then as well, kind of the same thing in the rubber match. Uh, Alex Call hits a two-run shot off him to give the Nationals the lead, and then C.J. Abrams homers again off of Canely. So for Canely, you know, the overall season numbers are not bad, but there's a couple things here. First off, he was great. So, you know, let, let's put Tommy Canely's season in halves. So at the All-Star break was kind of the half of Tommy Canely. Like, Tommy Canely missed the first couple months of the season. His first 16 appearances or so, he was tremendous. But the last 17 have been pretty bad. And the numbers would be worse if not for the fact that he's allowed 8 of 9 inherited runners to score. So the ERA could be way worse. I'm pretty sure it's in the low threes. Again, the numbers, like the strikeout numbers are still good. And I like Tommy Canley in general. Like I think that this is a good, this is a really good pitcher. But, like, he's been very bad 
for a while now. And so when you look at this bullpen, he's got to be lower in the pecking order. Like, for many, many reasons. You know, whether it be Jonathan Lewazaga really just being very good upon his return. I think about Keenan Middleton and, like, since he's been a Yankee, uh, you know, we kind of laughed it off, obviously, because it was a bit of a joke. Like, that's the one move that was made. But I got to say, he's been really good. And the one thing that Cashman is good at, the one thing I'll give him credit for, and I am no Cashman fan, is, you know, when the Yankees acquire relievers or just arms in general, ones that may not be that sought after by others, you know, the pitching factory of Matt Blake and company, they're able to really do a good job there. And so for Middleton, like, the numbers are exquisite. Um, so just the point there being that Kane Lee, you know, and even Ian Hamilton is another example of that. He's been so good. His role is a little bit different. He's more of a multi-inning reliever at this point. But I just think that with Kane Lee, um, under normal circumstances, the Yankees like were in playoff mode, I'd really be pushing for Kane Lee to be really moved down that pecking order. And, his, and Clay Holmes struggles continues as well. We'll talk a little bit about Clay Holmes, but he, um, you know, has had problems lately. A little bit of bad luck in his case, but but really also not all that sharp either. So, you know, and look, the bullpen is an area that is really the best spot for the Yankees, but it is interesting that in this series, it really came, you know, to bite them. Um, but yeah, I think those are like the main things. I, again, this team like really continues to be a total joke. And... You know, they, I know they showed some fight in Game 3 once they fell behind, but still, Yankees only have one win when Strong going into the ninth. And it, it's a case of when they trail, like they just simply don't come back. I, I, I got to check the stat here, but I got to imagine the Yankees are got to be one of the lower teams in terms of comeback wins. And I know that that stat's a little bit misleading where it's like, okay, like, you're down one nothing in the first and you take a lead. Like, I, I understand, like, there's nuance, but... Um, still, it just, it just feels as if they, um, don't do a good job when trailing. Like, it's just, a, it's a totally different team. Like, when they take that big lead, they'll tack on as well. Um, and you kind of saw that in game two. So, you know, the Yankees got pretty good starting pressure across the board. Game three was started by Michael King, and, and, and it was a solid outing. Um, I think he was hoping to give them more length. He only went two and two-thirds. I'm sure he was hoping to maybe push it to four, which would have been tough. But I guess it could have been done if he was super efficient. But they got that, you know, offense was was really bad in game one, really good in game two. John Carlos Stanton had a four-hit game in game three uh, to turn around what was, you know, really, I mean, I think his batting average dropped to, I think, 193. But then after his really good game in game three, I think his average is now above 200. And like I said, the Nationals, going into the series, I said, they're not playing so poorly, but, like, they did play a pretty sloppy brand of baseball at the same time. Like, their base running was awful. Really, really bad. So it's not to say, like, it's, I'm giving them credit, but it's also like the Yankees are their own worst enemy. I mean, the Nationals, like, fucked up. They got thrown out at second, like, so many times it felt like. And, you know, the defense was a bit spotty at times, too. But, like, again, like, if the Nationals are going into Yankee Stadium winning 2-3, to three, just imagine how things are going to be moving forward. Like, next up is a 10-game road trip against the Rays, Tigers, and Astros. I know the Tigers don't seem all that good. The Yankees haven't faced it this year, but... I don't, let me just look into something here. I don't think that's going to go so well. They kind of, they, to me, they're almost like the Nationals where like you look at them and it's like, oh, like they haven't really been good in recent years. Like, but that's another team that's like kind of slowly on the rise. Like a team that is like, you know, ascending a little bit. And so, I don't know. The Tigers, I, I don't know. I guess we'll, I guess we'll see what happens with, with, with that series. I mean, they, they actually really, they're not that good. But, like, honestly, their record in run differential is very similar to the Nats. So, honestly, the, the, the main point here is you have a 10-game road trip coming up against the Rays, Tigers, and Astros. And, man, I I think 4-6 and six would be um, doing better than expected. I, I think that's, like, as, that's, as be, that's as good as it could be. I, I think you're looking at something that's definitely going to be worse than that. It's a three-game set at the Rays, four games versus the Tigers, and then finally three at the Astros. So, yeah, like, the point here is I think this gets worse um, before it gets better. So let's talk about this National Series. Um, 
starting out the first game, Josiah Gray, who's a local product. I think he grew up a Yankee fan. Not 100% sure on that. I think he might have, though. And against Carlos Rodon. So Rodon makes his return. And, you know, six hitting six hits, one run, no walks. And you know what? I'll give him credit there. No walks is good. Although the Nationals are a very aggressive team. Nationals, they're a contact-oriented ori- type team. Uh, think about Cleveland uh, in that way, where don't you know it's just contact-based, and that was kind of true here too. But only one strikeout for Rodon, and, and the one was like a strikeout looking. So not a whole lot of swings and misses for Rodon. I'm still skeptical. Like as 2023 goes. I don't know if you get that Rodon turnaround. Like, wow, like that last month for Rodon, good stuff. Like, I don't know. I, I think struggles continue. But to be fair, it was a good outing, right? One run, six innings. Like, you'll take it every time you get it. And then for the Nationals, Gray struggled with his control, but the Yankees only mustered two hits in this entire game, both by Ben Rortfed. Like, put that in perspective. Rortfeld, who had a below 100 batting average going into this game, gets their only two hits. And in fact, he reached three of three times. So, the Yankees now. So, I talked about Greg Allen and uh, McKinney. But, in terms of the active roster, active lineup, this will affect the inclusion of Pereira and Peraza will mainly affect Connor Falefa and Bowers. And I feel bad for Connor Falefa. Bowers has been terrible lately. And in fact, he got a pinch hitting appearance today that was just terrible. Um, he pinched hit for Higgy, which honestly, you, I'm not surprised at all they did it, but they shouldn't have. I mean, Bowers has been straight up a joke. But either way, Connor Falefa, who had been playing well, like he's going to be on the bench now, I think, a lot of the time. So that's just you know, kind of getting the short end of the six. So, you know, you're looking at us at a spot right now where it's, you know, Pereira in left, Peraza at third, and everything else we've kind of seen. DJ settling in at first. There was news on Anthony Rizzo. Sounds like there's a chance he returns the season. If it's me, I would not be rushing him back. Like, what's the point? But we'll see where that goes. So Josiah Gray, you know, with, struggled with his command, but only allowed one hit in... Uh, six innings. Did have five walks and there was a hit by pitch as well. So it's not to say that he was, I mean, he he was struggling a bit, but he, he got through it okay. Now, we're not going to discuss a, a whole lot in this game, honestly. Um, the Nationals take the lead. I believe it was the first at bat of the season for Carter Keyboom. So Keyboom in his first at bat of the season, um, second pitch of the season for him, homers. Uh, so the Nats take a one nothing lead, but the Yankees respond in the third. Ben Rortfeld hits his first Yankee Stadium home run. His second home run of the season uh, ties it up immediately at one. Then, um, you know, again, a lot of bad base running by the Nats. I'm not going to get into that specifically. Um, score remains 1-1 for a while. And let's jump to the seventh. Jonathan Loisiga comes on and pitches a 1-2-3 inning. Again, Loisiga has been really, really sharp. And, you know, look, heading into next season, you'd expect Loisley to be one of the high-leverage relievers. Been impressed by what I've seen from him. You know, the strikeouts aren't always there, but he did get a strikeout in this series. Uh, sorry, in this appearance. Uh, but that's... Loisley can still be effective without the strikeout. So the score remains 1-1. Mason Thompson comes on for the Nationals and gives up a two-out single to Rortfed, the second hit of the game for the Yanks. Um, score remains 1-1 after 7, and then Tommy Canley comes on with two outs, gives up a home run down the right field line to C.J. Abrams. Abrams is, you know, a highly thought-of young player who was once in the Padres system. He was involved in that Juan Soto trade. And so for Canley, he... Uh, you know, gives up the homer, and so now it's 2-1 Nationals, and the Yankees go down pretty quietly, you know, the rest of the way, and that's been an issue for them. Hunter Harvey comes on for the Nats. Uh, it's a 1-2-3 inning for Harvey, strikes out Judge and Stanton as well. In the ninth, Keenan Middleton comes on and pitches a scoreless ninth. There was a couple of walks in there, but Middleton, you know, in, in what was a semi-big spot, down one in the ninth, uh, keeps it a one-run game, and then the closer, Kyle Finnegan, comes on. There is a one-out walk to Harrison Bader, but then Pereira lines out. And I thought Pereira in game one, even though the final results were, what, 0 for 3 with a walk, I think? Yeah, 0 for 3 with a walk. I thought Pereira in game one looked good. I thought then from there it got a little bit worse, although he does end up with a double in his last at bat in the third game. So that was good for him getting his first 
MLB hit. Either way, the final out is Peraza grounding out, and the Nationals win 2-1. And at that point, it extended the Yankee losing streak to nine games, which uh, was, you know, the first time they had had a nine-game losing streak since 1982. Now we go into game two, and they were looking to avoid a 10-game losing streak. Now, if that had happened, it would have been their first 10-game losing streak since 1913, but they did avoid it earlier in the day. Brian Cashman spoke to the media, um, and the Yankees win this one 9-1. Um, Aaron Judge was the story of this game. He hits three homers, and it was too bad. He was uh, one batter away from getting up in the bottom of the eighth, but that did not happen, as he would have attempted to hit four homers. But the funny thing was... The next game, he homered in his first at bat. So that's where I'm talking about four um, homers and five like five at bats or plate appearances, one of the two. But Sevy on the mound for the Yanks, and you know, look, he gave up one hit in six and two thirds innings. And I saw a stat that there's been four times this season that the Yankees have had six plus innings pitched by a starter um, and one hit or less allowed. And and actually, and Garrett Cole was not involved in any of them. Two by Domingo Herman, obviously one being the perfect game, and then two by Luis Severino. That part was shocking, too. I think the other one was against the San Diego Padres, which was his second start of the season, you know, where Severino had those good first two starts against the Reds and the Padres. Well, here, only two strikeouts for Sevy, and, and I think Sevy versus a better team probably would have gotten hit up more. But again, considering how bad he's been, it was a nice start for him. Um, he needed it desperately and we'll see where it goes from here from him again skeptical about Severino but it was uh it, it was good um and, and a lot better than you know the, the fact that Sevy pitched into the seventh inning and only gave up one hit two walks I mean pretty good stuff from him regardless of opponent and situation so the Yankees do take the lead early in the first it's Aaron Judge and this was the first time the Yankees had a lead since the first game of the Braves series so like that was crazy too I mean I think and that was like maybe the third I could be wrong on this, but I think it was maybe the third longest streak in Yankee history in terms of like not having a lead. So the 25th homer of the year for Judge at that point gives the Yankees a one nothing lead. That was a home run off of Mackenzie Gore. And, and the narrative continues as far as the Yankees are so much better versus left-handed pitching. It is not even close. Uh, that's why I think this race series could be major, major offensive struggles for the Yanks. So the Yankees take a one nothing lead there. Then in the second, the Nationals get sloppy. Uh, in, in many ways, I, I'm not going to talk about all of it, but, you know, eventually Bader gets the leadoff single. He steals second. He ends up on third on a ground, at which he really shouldn't have. And then Pereira gets his first RBI, but it was kind of lucky. Infield was in. Pereira hits a ground ball to short. They throw home, and Bader uh, scores because Kiebert Ruiz, the catcher, just kind of dropped the ball at the very last second. So it was lucky. It was sloppy defense. Then you have Higashioka reaching on an error by Stone Garrett. We'll talk about Stone Garrett a little bit. Sad story with Stone Garrett. But, like, that was a catch that should have been made. You get a Peraza walk. Then DJ strikes out looking. And DJ, with bases loaded this year, has been really, really bad. I haven't kept up on the stats, but I know at one point it was, like, maybe one for seven. And so, you know, again, DJ needs to... As, as much as DJ has been better lately, and I'll give him that credit, the strikeouts still remain. Either way, the inning continues, and Aaron Judge hits a grand slam off of Mackenzie Gore. And at that point, like, that was ball game. Yankees, you know, even though Seve was on the mound, uh, it's Judge's second homer in, in the second inning of the game. 26th homer of the year. 6 out the Yankees. I think this might be the Yankees' second grand slam of the year. I know Volpe hit one earlier in the season against Oakland, but maybe there was one in between. So it's six out in Yanks. Then let's go to the, I mean, Gore ends up going four innings. We'll go to the seventh. We'll go to the seventh. So, well, in, and Ian Hamilton relieves Severino, and Hamilton's just been brilliant for the Yanks. Um, his ERA drops to 1.68. He had three strikeouts in one and one-thirds innings. Like, he is someone, like I said, should be in the plans next year. Uh, in the seventh, new, uh, you know, at this point, relievers are in for the Nats. DJ LeMayu homers a, sh a short porch job. His ninth homer of the year, and unfortunately on that play, Stone Garrett gets pretty badly hurt. Uh, you know, I think they put, like, uh, one of those, like, air casts on. He had to be taken off on a cart. Kind of an ugly scene, but, you know, wishing the best to him, and hopefully he has a, a full recovery. But LeMayu homers, gives the Yankees a 7 0 lead. And then the next batter, after that delay, Aaron Judge homers again. His 27th homer of the year, third homer of the night, a, 
you know, Aaron Judge is still the best home run hitter in the game. Just all, all you got to do is just look at his uh, at bats per home run. And this isn't taking anything away from Otani, Matt Olson, but like Judge is a freak, um, you know, in many ways. And he is just simply a home run hitter. Uh, and he does, of course, way more than that. But the Yankees take an 8-0 lead there. Eventually in that inning, they would score again. You get a Bader double with two outs, and Anthony Volpe gets an RBI single, gives the Yankees a 9 0 lead. Let's jump to the ninth. In the ninth, Wandy Peralta comes on, and the Yankees were one strike away from the shutout, but former Matt Dominic Smith, lefty lefty as well. We saw Wandy give a home run to a lefty and Kyle Tucker recently, but D Dominic Smith also down the right field line, homers, and so the shutout goes away. The Yankees, though, do win 9 1, and the, the streak comes to an end, uh, and now they try to win a series for the first time since uh, they swept the Royals and for the second time since they, you know, had that series win first Oakland at the end of June, but they don't do so. And this is a win. This is kind of, this is a game the Yankees should have won. I mean, we've said that a lot of times, but against Patrick Corbin, the Yankees had a lead. Like it just, it felt like, all right, like they're going to win this series finally. And they don't do it again. It's just, it is crazy. So, um, Patrick Corbin, who I guess is to, to, to be fair to Corbin, he's been better lately, but just knowing the Yankees are so good versus lefties and knowing that Corbin, like, is he's just a guy that you can hit, but Corbin pitched pretty well for his standards and ends up going six inning, gives up three runs. The Yankees are so home run, like dependent. That's still, that's the one part of the Yankee game that like you look at the, the offensive statistics, they do it home runs, but like, that's all they really do. I mean, that's why they have the highest percent, the highest percentage of their runs scored, like in baseball, is is Yankee home run percentage? Like they just don't mix it up, um, really for the most part, and that kind of was the case again here. You know they they were not good with runners in score position. You know there was some bad luck involved. I mean, um, like Stanton in a big spot. You know the Yankees had some spots to break this open and didn't, and it wasn't for like lack of. I mean Stanton hit the ball hard all five at bats in this game, so his batting average now up to two hundred four. It's funny it jumped up like eleven points um, from this day, but. Either way, Pat Corbin on the mound for the Nationals and the Michael King starting for the Yankees. And King did a fine job. I mean, the one thing that he regret is a couple of walks in the third that did cost him, but there was a lot of mistakes in this game. Anthony Volpe defensively made a mistake or two. Yankee base running was really bad. Kyle Higashioka specifically, and as well Oswald Peraza, and as well Glaber Torres. So again, a game the Yankees could have easily won, but we've seen it all year. Just mistake after mistake after mistake costs them. And the Yankees are not good enough where the margin of error is so thin where you make all these mistakes and you're going to lose. So the Yankees take the lead. And again, it's an Aaron Judge homer in the first. So his 20th homer of the year, just amazing. He missed all that time, right? He missed about two months of baseball this season. You know, when you combine that first injury in April, then what happened? I think about two months, maybe a little more than that. And he's at 28 home runs, like... It's just not normal, but Yankees take a one thing lead. They had a chance for more, but Bader does strike out with first and third now out. And again, I like Harrison Bader, but this was a four, I believe, four strikeout game for him. Yeah, and he's not a guy that really strikes out a whole lot, but Bader strikes out four times here. And, you know, again, like the struggles for him are there. So the Yankees have a one nothing lead, but then the, the Nationals tied up in the third. A leadoff walk to Jake Alou, which, you know, King, you don't want that to happen. Another walk later on to Lane Thomas, and, and, and a costly wild pitch as well. King got a little erratic, but he should have gotten out of it, but Volpe makes an error. Joey Manessis hits the ground ball to short. Volpe, uh, unfortunately, doesn't make the play, and the Nationals tie it up. Keenan Middleton comes on, faces Dominic Smith, and strikes him out again. Keenan Middleton has been really good. In the third, the Yankees respond. After a leadoff walk to LeMay with one out, Glaber Torres, it's his 20th homer of the season. And for Glaber, uh, a solid, solid season for Glaber Torres. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Oh, man, that's not fair. A good season for Glaber Torres. Um, makes it 3-1 Yanks. And then in the fourth, Middleton with a couple of strikeouts. Again, Keenan Middleton has been really, really good as a New York Yankee. Then Johnny Brito comes out in the fifth, and I thought Brito did a nice job. Brito, a 1-2-3 fifth inning, a 1-2-3 sixth inning. Um, I should mention that in the fifth is when Stanton had a chance first and third, uh, one out and hit it really hard, but into a double play. And it's things like that where the game can break open, but doesn't. Uh, in the seventh, a leadoff double allowed by Brito, 
but then he does get uh, Vargas to pop out. Then Tommy Canley comes on, and he does strike out Riley Adams, but then an RBI single by Jake Alou. This was a, a tough play for Volpe. Can't really fault him. Uh, it's a play that maybe he would have wanted to make, but it took kind of a wicked hop, and so that's another inherited run allowed by Canley. Yankees take a 3-2, uh, sorry, the Yankees now have a 3-2 lead, and then the next batter, Alex Call, hits a two-run homer off of Tommy Canley to give the Nats a 4-3 lead, and then C.J. Abrams homers off of Canley like he did in the first game. Uh, and he admired it for sure. His 14th homer of the season gives the Nats a 5-3 lead. Hunter Harvey comes on in the 7th and pitches a scoreless 7th inning. Albert Abreu comes on in the 8th. He keeps the game at 5-3. Bottom of the 8th, Jordan Weems comes on. He allows a homer to Stanton. So Stanton hits his 19th homer of the season. At the time, it was his third hit of the game. Uh, and then with two out, Everson Prayer gets his first major league hit. Uh, it's a double, and his family was there, and they were, of course, very proud. So, you know, good on Pereira, and... Look, it's not going to get any easier versus the Rays, and we'll see what happens. But for Pereira, hopefully that gets him going after some struggles earlier in the series. He will get chances to do so. Then Kyle Finnegan, the closer for the Nationals, comes on for a four-out save, and the Yankees pinch hit Jake Barris for Kyle Higashioka, and Barris strikes out looking. Jake Barris is an absolute strikeout machine, but the Yankees see something in him, and so... There you are. Ninth inning, Clay Holmes comes on, and, and the struggles for him continue with one out. He got lucky, actually. So this was actually a two-out rally, too, which makes it even more fucked up. Uh, with one out, he gives up a hit to Jake Alou. And Judge, I guess, Alou kind of overslides a little bit. Like, he was safe for a moment. The, they end up calling him out after a review. So it's two out, no one on. And, and a nice throw by Judge there. But then Alex Call singles. C.J. Abrams gets a fortunate single, an infield single. But then he hits Lane Thomas, Holmes does. And then Joey Manessis with an infield single on a play where Holmes, if he fields it cleanly, he might have a chance at first, but doesn't. So Clay Holmes fielding has been a little bit of an issue lately as well. But then he does get Dom Smith to grant out. So that ends up being a very crucial run. That extra run there is the difference in this game. And so, again, for Clay Holmes... Um, again, while he's been a bit unlucky, has not been nearly as good lately as he had been. Bottom of the ninth comes on uh, in a two-run game. Now, Oswald Peraza with a little single, and he needed that because Peraza, as much as I've been impressed by him defensively, and we know the speed he brings, the offense had not been there, so hopefully that single gets him going. But then DJ LeMahieu strikes out. Aaron Judge flies out, but the Yankees get a little two-out rally going. It would be a single by Glaber Torres to make it first and second. Then Oswald Peraza steals third, but Glaber Torres doesn't steal second. And, and after looking at the replay, he absolutely should have. Dominic Smith wasn't holding him on. He had a pretty big lead, so that's a bad job by Glaber because after that, Dominic Smith was holding him on. So that, and, and then that kind of proves costly because then Giancarlo Stanton gets an RBI single, his fourth hit of the game. Uh, to now make it 6-5. So again, that Holmes extra run was important, as well as the Canely extra run that he gave up too. It all matters. As Harrison Bader comes up, and Bader down 6-5. Uh, by the way, as Oswaldo Cabrera pinch ran for Stanton, Bader gets into one, hits it deep to left center, but Alex Call tracks it down, and the Nationals win the series against the Yankees. Uh, the Yankees, like I said, have lost seven straight rubber games and are one eleven and three in the last fifteen series overall. Their their record is sixty one and sixty six. And now they go to Tampa to take on a Ray team that is playing uh, pretty well lately. Uh, let me just confirm that. Yeah, they are. They're on a four game winning streak. They are seventy eight and fifty one, and they're I mean that they're in a very key divisional race with the Baltimore Orioles, and and we know how important when in, in this format. It's very important to win the division and, and think of, and like, and you're going to, and if you don't win the division, you're going to face a very tough American, likely American League West opponent. So a lot on the line for Tampa. Uh, this will be the Yankees last series with the Rays. And it's been a fairly even one to this point. I think the Rays, I, I think, let me think about this. Yeah. Well, I guess it hasn't been that easy. So they split the four game set at Yankee stadium and then the Yankees lost two out of three at Tampa and home against Tampa. So overall, that gets you to four and six. The Yankees are four and six versus the Rays this year, which which I guess isn't great considering that you had two two of those series Yankee Stadium. So Rays have 
but 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 I guess the point there is that they've those games have been really close, uh, and so now they head to the trap. It'll be Garrett Cole versus Zach Eflin. Cole looking to rebound from a tough start versus the Red Sox, and you know one of Cole's low moments this year was you know that start against uh, the Rays at the trap where the Yankees uh, blew that six something lead. So we'll see what he does. Zach Eff- Eflin on the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays. Then Saturday will be Clark Schmidt against Tyler Glass now, which won't be easy. And then Sunday will be Carlos Rodon against former Yankee prospect Zach Littell. Zach Littell was acquired, you know, from the Mariners, uh, where he was traded, uh, where the Yankees traded James Pazos to the Mariners. And then when the Yankees acquired uh, Jaime Garcia at the, was it the 2017 deadline? Or 2018 deadline. I think it was 17. I think it was 17. And the Yankees traded Littell to the Twins. He's since bounced around and finds himself on the Tampa Bay Rays. So uh, we'll see how this one goes. Again, I I don't think the Yankee offense is going to have a whole lot of success in this series. But maybe they'll prove me wrong. But again, the Yankee struggles continue. It extended to a nine-game losing streak. Didn't go to 10. The Yankees, yet again, lose the first game of a series. Win the second. Lose the third. And, you know, August is not even, <laughs> there's still two more series in August as well. So, again, the this, this season can end, it can't end soon enough for the Yankees, but yet it continues. And now they will start a 10-game road trip starting in Tampa versus the race. <laughs>